In this session, we're trying to answer a few questions with regards to how to use magnetic field probes. If we have two wires placed in close proximity, such as showing here, if there's a fast changing of currents going through wire 1, then we expect to see an induced voltage if we measure uh, just over the open circuit showing here. That's why if we make a simple loop, we expect to see a voltage induced on wire 2. In reality, this is not terminated uh, with high impedance, but rather terminated with 50 ohm. This could be a spectral analyzer input or a oscilloscope with 50 ohm impedance. Therefore, a magnetic field loop is actually a D5 over DT probe because it measures the magnetic field in the form of a voltage. Treating it mathematically, a magnetic field loop does the derivative equation automatically for you. So if you have current going through wire 1, then the output of uh, your magnetic field probe is a voltage, is an induced voltage on your loop. We're using a simple DC-DC step-down converter to demonstrate the magnetic field loop. As you can see, this is a 12 volts in, 5 volts out buck converter. We have a, a switch and we have a diode here. This is the LC uh, filter stage on the output, so this 7.2 microhenry is the inductor. Here we have a 0.5 micro or 0.5 nanohenry inductance value represents the trace and track inductance on the uh, PCB. Uh, if we look at the current going through this inductor, if you are very familiar with buck converter, then you should expect to see a, a triangular current waveform such as this. And if you look if you measure the differential voltage across this inductor, you are expected to see a square wave uh, form like that. So really, uh, the voltage waveform is an uh, integration of the current waveform, right? And then uh, if we look at the current going through this trace, then we are expecting to see the current waveform like here, showing here, right? Okay, so here's the interesting part. We know, as we explained, that the magnetic field loop basically does the integration mathematics for you, right? So now, if I probe a voltage here, so these two are identical. Basically, what I'm trying to simulate is uh, I'm trying to move the magnetic field loop first over the inductor. Uh, of this buck converter. And second is I'm trying to move the magnetic field loop uh, sort of uh, on the trace and track. And this is the result you are supposed to get uh, when you look at the oscilloscope, which we'll see later in the uh, actual demo. You can see um, because the current all of a sudden drops to zero, it doesn't have this triangular waveform, but rather just like a spike volt, uh, spikes of voltage waveform here. Um, but if we uh, look at the voltage uh, when we place the magnetic field loop over the uh, uh, the inductor here, let's say, uh, so put a probe voltage uh, in this case here as well, you can see it's a square wave voltage waveform. As we explained, this is really uh, just a scaled uh, voltage of the voltage across this inductor. And we know the voltage across this inductor is a square waveform, right? Uh, well, in this case, it's uh, between minus 4 and 8 volts. Uh, so what we measured using the magnetic field loop is really uh, just a scaled down version or a lower bound of, of the same voltage waveform. Uh, same if you measure the voltage across this inductance, then you're expecting to see similar waveform as this, uh, but a larger uh, amplitude. Okay, let's probe um, the inductor uh, as we, we, we probe here. So I place the magnetic field probe on the inductor. As you can see, that's the induced voltage showing on trace 2. 
and this trace is the mathematical calculation. So this gives me the integration of this voltage waveform. So effectively, this is the current waveform. Uh, obviously, because it is a pure math calculation on the oscilloscope, so uh, so the spikes uh, are not showing here on the current waveform. In reality, you, we should expect to see some uh, resonances and spikes on this point and this point here. Okay, so now if I place the magnetic field loop somewhere here, as you can see now, this is the uh, uh, the trace or track uh, voltage, induced voltage showing here. As we explained in the simulation model, this is exactly something we expected to see. Uh, you should notice that the peak to peak voltage is not small. So this could be a problem, uh, especially if you are trying to pass this board for automotive CISPR 5, CISPR 25 class 5 uh, emission limits. This could be a problem induced uh, voltage here. There are two ways of placing a magnetic field loop. Placing it horizontally, this is what we often call a sniffing exercise. And the purpose of sniffing is to identify, locate where the maximum change of magnetic field is on your board and that's often where the noise source is on a dc dc converter such as this if we uh, place the magnetic field probe and we find uh, the amplitude showing on the oscilloscope or spectrum analyzer is at its maximum that's where the hot loop area is once the hot loop area is identified, then we can place the magnetic field probe perpendicularly to the PCB. By doing so, this side, this single-sided conductor of the loop is then pressed against a, a trace or track on the PCB. And then, uh, because of the induced voltage we talked earlier on, if there's a fast change of current going through a certain trace or track, it will induce a voltage in the magnetic field loop. That's, that's why we use this uh, loop perpendicularly to find any trace or track that needs to be fixed. Let's compare uh, the performance between a shielded magnetic field loops and unshielded loops. As you can see, the uh, the wire size are almost the same. It's just one shielded, one unshielded. Uh, the benefit of a shielded loop is uh, it prevents uh, E-field interference. Uh, but in reality, when you do a job such as sniffing or uh, trying to measure the induced voltage on the trace, um, doesn't really matter that much as we demonstrate here. So here is a unshielded loop. If I placed over this, um, uh, PCB just sniffing, you can see the, the waveform in the purple. Um, and if I place on the on the trace, you can see that induced vo voltage. Uh, then you know really um, it's it's quite um, quite representative as as we uh, we see here. Changing shielded magnetic field loop, and I place the same same location here. As you can see, uh, pretty much the. Pretty much the same performance, really, um, compared to uh, the unshielded loop. Shall we use round or square-shaped magnetic field loops? Compared with a square-shaped magnetic field loops, round-shaped one, as you can see here, only has a small fraction, fraction of the length of the wire that is in close proximity to the wire on the test. Therefore, if you look at the areas here and here, the coupling is reduced. So we expect to see, uh, you know, given the same amount of change of current going through this wire, we expect to see a larger induced voltage using a square loop compared with round shaped loop. Notice that to, to have a fair comparison, the, uh, the length of the wire is kept the same, whereas the shape has a, a shape as shapes are different. Shall we use a large or small magnetic field loops? Well, if you have a small magnetic field loop such as this and this, uh, the benefit is that you can really touch some, some small components and areas that cannot uh, be easily accessed. 
However, in the larger loop also have the benefit that first they uh, they can uh, they can have more flux going through this area. Therefore, uh, it's more sensitive. Larger size loop or smaller size loop. As we explained, larger size loop should pick up a larger voltage. So uh, if I placed uh, on this here, you can see that's the induced voltage, uh, and about, I would say, 40 millivolts peak to peak. And if we change to a smaller loop, uh, you can see the uh, induced voltage is much smaller, let's say. But the benefit with smaller loop is that you can really get to the component level. So for instance, if I want to get to these diodes, then you can see I really, I can probe uh, the noisy nodes such as this uh, shocky diode. Um, and you can see these are the uh, induced voltage uh, at the switch node.